feel bigger. Today I'm going to show you guys how to spool a uh, spinning reel with braid and backing in just one try, so stay tuned. So a lot of times, a lot of guys just take the spool, take it out to like a bait shop and they'll have, them, uh, they'll have the guys with their spool from. But me, I'm pretty kind of particular with my braid. I really like Max Quattro stuff. And I usually buy it in um, 300 yards. This reel holds more than 300 yards of 20 pound braid. So um, that means it's not gonna be full. That means you're gonna have to put in some backing. And I'm gonna show you guys how to put 300 yards of braid plus backing on this reel in one try. First thing you are going to need to do is this is not mandatory but uh get yourself a little rod like this this is a ugly stick dock runner it's actually for my daughter but it serves as a dual purpose for me because this is what i use it for um this reel obviously doesn't belong on this rod but uh, i use this reel on my surf rod and also my eight foot inshore rod and I tend to like to put at least 300 yards of braid on it and so conveniently Max Crawford comes in 150 yards or 300 yards, 500 yards, 1000 plus yards of uh, spools. I always gravitate towards the 300. Uh, <clears throat> so quickly to explain what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spool. Um, all the 300 yards onto the Mac, uh, onto my spool. And then from there, I'm gonna connect the braid that's already on my spool to my model line and fill up the spool to where I like it. And I'll show you guys here how, usually how full I um, set up my uh, spools. And then what we're gonna do then after is uh, take out all the line and put it back in in reverse. I'll show you guys that a little trick, trick here in a bit too. So let's go ahead and get started. The braid, right? You guys see that? Now I got the braid coming off, and I'm gonna feed this in through my little rod, and then I'm gonna put it onto the spool. And the reason why I use a little rod is because it's really easy to work with this little rod. Um, because it's so small and you're not banging it off of things. And again, it's an ugly stick, so it's basically indestructible. So you guys, I guess you can see that. Open your spool. I use a tie little knot. Little slip knot. As you guys can see, I put a little piece of a uh, uh, tape here. Uh, you don't have to if your reel is made for braid. Uh, this reel is made for braid, but it's just an old habit of mine to put a little. Uh, little electrical tape there because I still think that even though the spool is made for braid I think it helps out a lot so here we go we're gonna start reel on this uh, initially I don't want any tension on this I just want to get it started like that and then I go ahead and start reeling it put a little bit of tension on the uh, on the box I just keep this on the ground, put my foot on it, and uh, gives it a little bit of tension. It helps when you have a fast reel. This is a 6-2-to-1 gear ratio. So, 
I still don't think that. Alright, so there it is. Alright, so this is 300 yards of Max Quattro, 20 pound braid. And as you guys can see, there's still that much lip left on the spool. And definitely don't want that. So, what I'm gonna do is install or put in some vacuum. So now that I got my 30 yards on here, I feed my braid back through the rod, and then I usually do a double uni or FG knot. It just depends on how I feel that day. Um, most of the time, it's just a double uni because by the time if I get spooled off to 300 yards, that fish is probably not going to. Uh, it's probably gonna win the battle. So. Let's go ahead and do FG knot today. So quickly, it's just a basically you just want to tie these two uh, lines together. I'm just gonna do a quick FG knot using the bow method. can see that my FG knot right there um, and then just from there I you got a pegboard makes life a lot easier just on the when I do start to reel in my mono I do try to give it a little bit of a resistance so I, I am trying to eliminate all the um, basically all the extra little space in here that I can and when I'm doing my my backing I'm paying attention make sure I don't over spool yeah that right there is probably good honestly so I'll show you guys right here it's just like right under the lip right here I don't know if you guys can see that so that's pretty good alright so I took the backing that is on my reel right here and I tied it back onto the old spool and then on top of that I put in a 3 8 uh, socket adapter and I'm gonna unspool my actual the reel all the line back onto the spool with the backing so now I have this contraption and uh, this makes life having an impact drill or just a drill makes life a lot easier so I go ahead and I start Spooling all my line back onto the an actual empty spool. And uh forgot to mention you need two of these. You need the original one that you break him on, and you have an extra one. Um you're gonna need the second one. Because I'll show you guys what we're gonna do here next. So I go ahead and slowly spool all my line with the backing onto this spool, because what we're doing now is we're gonna flip the uh, line. Okay, here's the braid. Here's where you kind of want to be careful. You're holding braid and it's running through your fingers really fast. You can get cut. I do recommend you go ahead and um, use gloves because if this whole contraption here messes up and something gets pinned, your fingers, there's a high chance your fingers getting cut. So don't want that to happen. getting pretty full right there and only the other bit left so I should be fine
if it gets over the lip, uh, I try to just keep my braid in the middle at this point. But I'm almost done. You don't want to keep the braid close to the edge. Okay, as you guys can see, I re-spooled all my line to this spool. So my reel's empty again. And now what I'm going to do is flip it and I'm able to do that. But if you have an extra reel that could take all this line, uh, you could spool it to that reel. If you have like a bigger reel than what you're spooling to, spool it to that reel and then spool it back onto this. But since I don't have an extra reel right now, I'm going to put this on a peg and take my other spool that is empty here and I'm going to tie this knot again just quick uni knot cool. all right so, and just like that I'm gonna transfer my braid onto this bowl but I'm gonna put the braid in first and then the backing on the outside on this spool. And then right after that, I'm going to finally spool it back onto my reel. And that will put the backing on the inside and the braid on the outside. So let's do that. Ooh. That's what you gotta watch out for. Oh, again, don't do that. That is a nightmare waiting to happen. Make sure you, this line over here is nice and tight. Oh, and yeah, don't want to do that either. See how it can wrap up around your, your, um, your impact. So I got my reel again. I already got the backing on my uh, reel now. As you can see, I flipped the line. Now the backing's on the outside. And all you basically have to do now is put this back either on the peg or back in its box and spool this line completely onto your reel. And you should have the perfect amount of uh, line on your reel now. So, as you can see, I'm putting a little bit of tension on the backing just to keep my backing tight. You can use braid. I forgot to mention that. Uh, and I have used old braid before as backing. Uh, I do like that because uh, it's a little bit lighter than the mono. But for this time around, mono will be. We'll start, we'll do just one. That looks pretty good right there. And that right there is usually how full I spool my line to. Oh, you guys can see that. And that is how you spool braid onto your reel. First time, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, so I like my line just right under the lip. So that turned out pretty nice.